Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the brand new type of ID being added in .NET 9 aiming to replace how we used to use GUIDs until now as well as integers in some case. Now, this ID mostly has to do with databases, usually relational databases, and it builds on top of what we already know about GUIDs. However, the biggest issue with GUIDs is that they can cause a bunch of very nasty performance issues on databases when they're used in many scenarios as primary keys. So you have this problem where it makes sense to use a GUID in a database as a primary key, but you can't because you really need that performance. So you fall back to an integer and usually you have an auto-incremented integer because you want that ordering. However, that has its own problems. So what I'm going to show you in this video aims to solve both issues and is doing it by introducing a new type of ID called a UUID version 7. First, let's just recap on how we create a GUID in C Sharp, right? If you want to create a GUID, all you do is GUID, new GUID, and you usually use that basically everywhere, especially as an ID, and especially in NoSQL databases. This is pretty much the way to do IDs in NoSQL databases because you don't need to check any database to see if it exists because the fact that it exists is astronomically small. So you can keep calling GUID.NewGUID in an extremely distributed system and you don't have to worry about other services in that system creating the exact same ID. So you can assume it's globally unique. That's what GUID stands for, globally unique identifier. And it's building on the UUID, universal and unique identifier, which some people use interchangeably, but it's not quite the same thing, but let's just treat it as the same thing. And some of you might already know that GUIDs in C Sharp is often associated with the version four of the UUID. Now, if you want the specification on how UUID v4 works, I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to read further. But basically, um, UUID v4 is meant for generating UUIDs for truly random or pseudo-random numbers. That's the idea. Preventing clashes. It's very unlikely it's going to exist anywhere else with this value. It's 128 bits uh, and we've been using it for years. And the distribution of bits doesn't really matter. But what does matter is the new version of GUID that we're going to have now in .NET 9, which is a UUID v7. And what makes the UUID v7 special? Well, as we're going to see down here, it is time ordered because the first bit is actually time. It's a Unix timestamp making it sorted, making it orderable. And that sortability, the fact that it's ordered, fixes the problem that we can have in databases. So if you need that, you should be using this new v7 in your applications in .NET 9. Now, I don't think you should retroactively go ahead and use it in existing databases. I don't know what clashes that might cause. I'm also not a DBA, so it's not something I can go ahead and say, if you use v4 now in an existing system, go and use v7 everywhere. But you should know that this will now exist. So if you have a new system, Maybe it's something you can use. Now, before I show you how you can use this new type of UUID in .NET 9, I do want to mention that we're running a summer sale on Domtrain until the 14th of July. You can get 30% off any course, including the brand new Open Telemetry course that we just launched. That's a unique opportunity because usually you get 15 to 20% discount on launch, but until the 14th, you can get that for the 30%. It's an amazing course. No developer should be building applications without Open Telemetry baked in. So if you want to find more about that, check the link in the description or use code SUMMER24 at checkout to get 30% off. Now, making that UUID 7 is very, very easy. All you need to do, again, using the exact same GUID type, you're going to go ahead and say GUID create version 7. And that will create your GUID. So if I go ahead and I run it, you're going to see that it looks very much the same. But if I go ahead and I do this five times, what you will notice is that GUID starts in a very, very similar way. You can see these first bits, they look very similar because they represent time. And that's exactly the problem that this thing solves. In fact, we now also have an overload for create version where you can pass down the date time offset as a timestamp. So you can say time provider using the new time provider, use the system, and then you can say get UTC now. So you can get the UTC now 
and you can push that feather in the past you can move it in the future and that is also the default so if we go in here you'll see that timestamp is taken into account it's being converted into unix time in milliseconds and then it's used in the algorithm to convert it into what we eventually get back in fact looking at this and i'm looking at this for the first time i don't know if it's going to be final uh, but it's interesting that they use just the new GUID method of how we create a normal GUID, a v4 GUID, and then they go ahead and they use unsafe.asref to very efficiently write the bits of that timestamp in milliseconds on the A, B, C, and D parts of the UUID, because as you know, uh, it is an uh, integer, short, short, and then a bunch of bytes, uh, and the rest they leave untouched which I find very interesting. I don't know if that's the most optimal way to do this. And in fact, I think I saw a comment saying uh, this is probably not the most optimal way to do this, but they don't have an easy way to get secure random bytes in Colib, the BCL, uh, without doing this since the secure RNG is in a different layer. I don't know enough about this, uh, but I do know that we can see over here that 1 to the power of 48 is roughly 8,925 years, which from the Unix epoch means won't overflow until July of 10,895. The poor developer whose system will crash in 8,000 years, I really feel for them, but for now, uh, I don't have to worry about it, and I will also be dead. Now, what's interesting about all this is that, well, if you have to do extra work on top of generating a GUID, which, you know, we go from new GUID to new GUID plus add time in the mix, well, this isn't that going to have a performance impact. And let's take a look at that. I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run benchmarks, and the benchmarks I'm going to run, well, it's very simple, I have the v4, the new GUID, and then I have the v7, create version 4. So if I go ahead and I just say run this, let's take a look at what results we get back, how the two different versions compare. Okay, so results are back, and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, we go from 37 nanoseconds to 70 nanoseconds. It's around twice as slow to generate the time ordered good, the V7, compared to the V4, the new good version. So clearly there is a performance hit. Now, if you have this sort of use case, it's very unlikely these 40 nanoseconds should ever bother you. And there's no memory allocation difference because, as we can see, Microsoft is being very cheeky to write the daytime very efficiently by using unsafe.asref. Uh, so it's not something you have to worry about. And if you are using GUIDs as database keys, use this feature. You should not be using integer. You should not be using the traditional GUID. You should be using this. It will be more efficient for your system in general, even though it takes longer to generate. I don't think you should even look at this longer at all. You're going to gain more by just using it. And ultimately, it's replacing code that you might already have because there's many good packages that try to offer the same UUID v7. Some of them have half a million downloads recently updated nine days ago, 11 days ago, a month ago. So these things exist. People have a use case for this. And if you're not using something like Snowflake ID or any sort of other globally distributed audit ID, I think this is the easiest way to get into this without breaking your existing API because ultimately this just maps back to a GUID. It is not a new distinct type. It just takes those new ordered bits into account in the first half. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about all this? And have you been using any other type of ID? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.